to work tonight. 
pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I got picked out one more for tonight. 462. Sunshine in my soul. We've had a lot of sunshine lately. So let's get a big smiles on our face and have some sunshine in our soul. <laughs> God in 
answers prayers like that quick sometimes. God is good. Great to hear that he's doing good. Send him our love, brother. Yes. How you doing, Erica? Well, Pacific View and Bandon has agreed to take my mom. Wow. So, Congratulations. Uh, Congratulations. It's as opposed to two hours, and I'm pretty happy about that, but we're still waiting for the Medicaid people to yeah. uh, light their fire. Yeah, we'll wait for the red yeah. tape now. Huh? Yeah, so, but they did project that maybe by next Wednesday everything will be finalized, and that would be like moving day. Wow. So, wow. Um, there yes. you go. Yeah. Amen. And if you need any help, ask me. I'll be there for you. Well, we might need help because we have to get her a bed. Okay. So, you know, there might be a, a possibility my dad and me can't move a bed over there. So, that might be our only... Anything you need. I got a truck. I got a strong back. We That's good. <laughs> you got it right there. Other prayer requests, other phrases for the week, things happening. I know we've had a good week. Yes, my love. So last week, uh, Gordon and I decided to go up towards Powers. He <laughs> wanted to go to Yellow Creek. I've never been there. Where? Yellow Creek. <laughs> it's about eight and a half miles on your way to Powers. Yeah. And so we're driving along, and this car just would not get off my rear. So I pulled over real quick, and uh, there was a little bit of a jump on the road. Uh, drop. Drop on the road, yeah, mm -hmm. an edge. And we went very, didn't get very far from there, and I kept hearing this really odd noise. And I asked Gordon if he knew what it was, and he goes, no, it shouldn't be here. No, okay. <laughs> so we found a place to pull over, we had a flat tire. Oh, Les Schwab had put the tires on, so I didn't have the strength. But where I had stopped was a uh, people's property. And the gentleman had the machine to undo the tires. Mm -hmm. He undid them for me, and I was raising up the car, got it up as far as I thought it was going to go, and it fell. Well, he had unscrewed all the bolts. I mean, it should have hit me, and it didn't. And that's yeah. my phrase. Yeah. God is good. God, God, God even answers unanswered prayers, unasked for prayers. There we go. God is always good to us. Guide and guard and protect. Thank you, love. It's great testimony. Yeah, hey, Andrew. I need prayers for tomorrow. Oh, yeah. You got your big meeting tomorrow. Yeah, I'm meeting with the, instead of the faith base, I'm meeting with the uh, local businesses, and uh, um, it could be it's a different crowd. Yeah, so it's a little different help the homeless with these people. So, just need yeah. prayer for tomorrow. Need <laughs> prayer for some strength and guidance and that. So, let's all pray for Andrew. The meeting goes well tomorrow. Um, you said that meeting was where or when? Uh, I, I checked. I'll let them know later. Okay, okay, no problem. Any other prayer requests? Yeah. Mom and I are going to be on vacation this weekend. Oh. Yay. Vacation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so you're not going to be here and sit, hear me speak Sunday now. Huh? Oh, well, you're going to miss out. <laughs> well, that's okay. I brought a little message for tonight. Yeah, we can watch it later. Good, good. Oh, yeah, because you're going to want to. It's good. Uh, anything else that's not on our prayer list, Susie? Where's Dick? Okay. Early. Early. Yeah, which is good. Okay. Okay. Well, let's keep Dick in our prayers. He's going to have a procedure in the morning. And keep him going. Um, how's everything else doing? How's Charmaine? How's Heather? We're doing uh, immunotherapy, immunotherapy and the chemo pill. So, so far she can eat and everything's going wow. okay. okay. And Heather, I went up again Tuesday and the doctor, uh, she takes the wound off and then there's this kind of a partial uh, brace that goes on her. Oh, okay. And so, and then she keeps physical therapy for another six weeks and then goes again. So, wow, you know, wow. She's praying now. She's a lot to that. You know, they put anchors in, she asked her, they put ankle, anchors in her ankle. <laughs> and eventually they, she said they all like absorbed or something. I don't know how long. Well, that's what they did with Prudence's ankle when she broke her ankle on our honeymoon. They, they put thing, pins in there that were supposed to dissolve after like 10 years or something. 
I guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it hasn't been 10 years, but okay. It's been almost 18 years. Oh, I guess it has, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been a little more than 10 years. <laughs> yes, okay. Hey, if it only seems like less than 10 to you, I'm doing something good, I guess. <laughs> Andrew, yes. Sorry, I'm just full words. No, hey, that's okay. That's okay. Um, my buddy Wayne and his wife wanted to take the church for a Greek wedding and they were going to go to Jesus on Sunday morning. So okay. Well, good, good. And you had some other friends that were here, too. Uh, Andrew? Hey. McCann? Yes. And Rick? And Rick, yeah. yeah. They, were here on Sunday. they were here a couple weeks ago. Yeah. They came a couple times and yeah. seemed like nice people. Yeah. Look forward to seeing them again too. Yeah. yeah. Tell tell them church says hi. Okay. Yeah, most definitely. We got any other requests that aren't on our list? We still haven't even made it to the list yet. So. <laughs> and now let's get started here. I know Carrie's top of our list. She's, she's been on our prayer list for quite a while. Gary's doing better as I understand. Things are improving. We just need to keep praying for her healing. Um, it says here, drain the staples are out of her leg. So, good thing. Sherry? Gary was released to go to work. Wow, okay. She's released to go to work. Okay. Well, and, and just one more thing. Nice to see you back. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, it's really nice to have y'all hello. I, I've been over here fixing the bathroom and floor, and I said, oh, I need a tape measure. Oh, I can run up to Steve. Steve's got a tape measure. It's like, oh, wait, they're not home. <laughs> so it's good to have y'all home. Maybe I'll stop by and get a tape measure. <laughs> and then there's Lois. It's always good to see Lois coming in. Yes. Welcome, welcome. It's nice to have you here tonight. How you been feeling? Sore. Sore, yeah. Well, that's okay. We're going to keep praying for you. Thank you. Well, you're very welcome. Um, Steve and Sherry are traveling. I guess we prayed pretty well because they got back home. <laughs> welcome home. Uh, how's that new grandbaby? Saw some pictures. Yes. So, so sweet. Yes. Babies always are. They make us happy to be alive. Um, of course, we've already talked about rosemary, too, and everything going on there. Matthew's still got a lot of allergies. So been messing Matthew, so let's keep prayers out for him. So I've Ted a few times. I haven't seen Ted in a couple weeks, so let's, let's be praying for Ted as well. Um, Becky Henry needs defibrillator and a whole lot of things going on. It just seems like she's got one thing after another, keeping her from getting the surgery, so... Let's just pray that things go together with her and everything going on there. Um, Lawrence, how you been feeling? I'm feeling well. I'm feeling good in my head. Do you? Good, good. Getting your energy back up some? A little bit, yeah. Good, good. Tiny bit. Tiny bit, okay. Well, you just keep working on it. We'll keep praying for you, too. Thank you. You're very welcome, Lawrence. Of course, we have here that Terry got one of those two grandbabies born, so we got one more to come. Let's keep praying for that. Jay at Evergreen Court needs our prayers. I'm not exactly sure, but I'm reading it on here. So. Yeah, that's me. He's still, he's uh -huh. not doing well. Okay, he's, he's still not doing well. I think Rock's uh, with them over there at Evergreen Court, and he's one of, he's got the name Rock Eye. And he was just oh, okay. Okay, well, let, let's keep up the prayers there for Jay. And then Jerry had asked for prayers for Amanda, not feeling well there. Barbara's been asking for prayers for Bob's diabetes and his legs, and we keep them prayers up for him there. Um, and Lauren says, again, your knee was bothering you. Is that, how's that knee doing? Good, good. And how's Joyce doing? Good. Okay. Oh, she did. Still struggling with the unemployment claim. Yeah. Well, she still needs our prayers there, so we'll keep her in our prayers. Oh, you're very welcome, always. Um, Dick and Susie, two grandbabies do. One on the tenth. One on the tenth. Okay. So the tenth is the early date. Yes. Okay. And the other one. 
Oh, okay. On the first of August, so okay. Well, we'll pray everything goes well. Our daughter's birthday is on the tenth, so yes, Lord. Okay. Well, we'll keep up prayers for you for finding an apartment and strengthen God's direction and guidance in that. Okay. Absolutely, you're very welcome. Always good. You know, God tells us to pray in all times for all things in all occasions. So we pray for everybody for good and the bad. It's the way we're supposed to do it. Yeah, how you doing? Lois? Um, my daughter is having heart problems. Oh. Her name is Jean. Your daughter Jean having heart problems. She's in the hospital right now. Where? In Roseburg. Oh, in the hospital in Roseburg. Okay. So let's keep Jean in our prayers and add her to our prayer list here. That her heart problems can be met in the right ways. Um, you know, Mikey had asked us to pray for the fires up in Canada. And we have mentioned that there's quite a few fires around Canada, Washington, Oregon, across this country. There's, again, there's the floods going on, the tornadoes going on down the south. Arizona's got big fires now. Arizona's got big fires. Andrew? We Praying before we get started. And why not? Ask God for guidance and direction right now before we even get to that point. Yeah, we need to pray for the firefighters, pray for everybody involved, pray for the people who lost lives, lost homes, lost everything. Fires can be devastating, and we've seen a few too many of those over the years. So let's keep praying for them. That's great praise. Our daughter Lillian is doing great on her knee. Um, Went over there the other day, she had a pair of shorts on so I could see the scar, just just a, about three inch long scar and then she has little tiny dots where they did the micro incisions on her knee. And two months later, she's walking around, nothing on there. But it's amazing how little old yellow ones heal. <laughs> but and, and she said, thank everybody for the prayers here. It's, it's been a great influence. We keep up our prayers for our grandkids and they'll come back here. We just Keep trying to sow those seeds. <laughs> what else can you do, right? Um, Franklin, looks like your surgery went well. You can hear us real well now, right? Yeah. All right. <laughs> one all done. One all done, one more to go. Uh, yeah. And they're doing the next one next week? Well, yeah. Oh, it's a couple weeks. It's a couple weeks off, okay. We'll, we'll keep up the prayers for you for that, but it's glad to see you soon. First time I went to church without my glasses in the north. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I can't recall seeing you without your glasses. I wasn't wearing them because I was sick. Oh. Well, that's why I can't remember. That might be a day before. <laughs> but it's great seeing you here and seeing you see it. That's God's miracle right there. Now, Jacob's been needing some prayers for us, everything going on in his life. Uh, he needs some prayers for strength. He's praying for a good job, pray for things to settle in Jacob's life. Derek and Johanna still gone. We still need to pray for them and everything going on. I finally saw some stuff on Facebook. I'm glad to see they're having a great time. It was amazing to see those pictures of the church over there, wasn't it? All those people. Uh, Great to see Christians around the world. Yes, Praise God. Praise God. But let's keep up the prayers for Derek and Johanna. Keep up the prayers that he'll get home safely to us soon. And Johanna and baby Ezekiel have a good time. And they get home safely to us eventually. Um, Jerry's wanting some prayers about losing mobility. So we need to pray for Jerry. Uh, I've got a note here. Jean Ferguson's got cancer and needs our prayers. Jean and Jim, I think it was Bob and Jenny mentioned that. Yeah. Um, yeah, prayers for Vinny. I got that on the top here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, John Neal's not here. Oh, that's not easier. Yeah, it is. Yeah, let's 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 pray for John too and keep him in our prayers. 
Tu hadi for example now, I can't remember this now. We need to continue to pray for all our missionaries, continue to pray for the Indian missions, continue to pray for the families there and all the work they do on this. And so these families don't have these kids seem to be keeping up the mission, so let's keep the prayer for strength and guidance for them. Yeah, Andrew. I saw that Mike Kennedy's over in Jamaica right now, and you know he'll be here soon, but yeah. he's over helping out with the ministry over there, so we need to pray for him and the ministry that's going on right now. Yeah, let's continue to pray for the Jamaican ministry and everything that Mike Kennedy's doing there. Uh, he kind of took up the mantle from him on that one, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they, they, they need our prayers. All the ministries around the world need our prayers. Yes, love? This morning there was a car accident. They had blocked Highway 101 from Ocean Boulevard up to where you can uh, get to the museum there. Um, I heard that it was a motorcycle and a semi, but they oh. had it blocked for six and a half hours today. So it was bad. So I yeah. just think we need to pray. And pray for the families involved in it. You know, the one that has to be suffering and things like that. Yeah, Lola? Also, um, there was a shooting. It was um, Monday. Out I saw the girl. I There was three people. It was the Sean. Yeah, I'm Mark. You're Travis Lane right near where Rosie was. I'm kidding. Kendall. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> right over my ear, you know, yeah. Um, I don't know, I haven't heard any details, that's all I've heard. The, the, there was three adults that, a man, and two men and a woman that were hospitalized. Um, okay. Nobody died, thankfully. Thankfully, but, yeah, but I mean, and two, this world, world is two, losing it more and more. Two people had just been <clears throat> Yeah, we need, we need these people, we need to pray for these people. We pray for our country, our society. It just, it's crumbling. I mean, I mean, we know the end of times are near. It's, it's getting crazy out there. Yeah. The more, the more the closer it gets, the more we need to pray. The closer it gets, the more this world needs God. The only way we're going to get God is by praying and asking God to come in our lives, to work in our lives. So we've got to pray for the whole world. And nobody else but the Christians will. We gotta pray for this world. Well, if we got nothing else before we get started, any more requests? If not, Tom, can you start off our prayer meeting this evening and then I'll finish it up. Heavenly Father, we're thankful to be here this evening. We're thankful for the many, many blessings you give us and for watching over and protecting us. We do pray, Heavenly Father, for Dave and Rosemary that the Continue to work with them and help them. We do pray, Heavenly Father, for Derek and Carl and keep them safe and them safely back to us. Pray you continue to be with Lois and the many others that are in the need of healing, Heavenly Father, that you'll be with each one and you'll be a comfort and strength and for all. We just pray you'll continue to watch over and protect us. For this in Christ's name, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for all the blessings. Thank you for bringing us all here safely. Thank you, Lord, for seeing your son. We pray, Lord, that you'll be with Louise, be with Lois, be with Derek, John. For all that you do, Lord, we love you and thank you. In Jesus' name. Our Father in heaven, we are thankful that you can give us a living more. We thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. We thank you, thank you for your plan of salvation. We thank you for our, and we thank you, Jesus, for going to the cross and dying on the cross so that we might find salvation through his death, his burial, and his resurrection, Father. We're thankful that we can come to you in prayer, Lord, and you will answer our, you will answer our prayers and, and hear our prayers, and we 
single to the progress that you have made with Carrie and Lois. Lord, we continue to pray for Carrie and Lois as they continue to do their healing and accomplish the power of God. We pray for uh, Lois' daughter and pray that you will be with her and, and the situation there, Lord. And we pray this all that everybody else up on our prayer list, Lord, and place them in your hands, Lord, and we pray that uh, you would bless them and keep them and comfort them. Father in heaven, we're grateful and thankful that we can come before you and you are sufficient. We glory you, we thank you for who you are. Thank you for Jesus, who always serves. Father, we thank you for the gift that you've given us. Thank you for the church, the church worldwide. We pray for our country, Father, and uh, the things that are going on. And we know that you're in control, but Father, please help us be able to do what we need to do in, in this climate that uh, we live in. Father, we thank you for our missionaries, the ones who support the turn of defeat communications and Gabriel Academy and many of your fathers who lift them up before you and we thank you for their dedication. Thank you for those who proclaim your word throughout the world. Father, we thank you for the church here and all those uh, concerns that we have for uh, that are listed on our prayer list, Father. We, uh, we just ask your will be done in this situation. Thank you for those who could not be here this evening. Father, we just lift them up before you. So be with uh, Derek and the family and Father in the name and give them a good visit and a resting uh, Time and uh, Father, be with Derek as he travels back uh, in a few days to the United States. But Father, that's in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear God, we thank you for this evening and those gathered together in the church body. We thank you for the blessings that we have every day. We thank you for the beautiful weather we've been having tonight. We thank you for the ones who have traveled home.
Dear Father in heaven, you're such a wonderful God. I want to thank you so much for everything you do for us. We thank you for your answered prayers. We thank you for the healing that you've given us. We thank you for the guidance and protection that you give us every day. We've got quite a few who are sick on our prayer list. We need your help, dear Lord, and we pray that you'll just reach down and touch their lives. Pray that you'll be with Lois and help her her back and the pain, help ease her pain, dear Lord, and speed her healing as best we can. Pray that you'll be with Carrie and help her in her recovery, guide and heal her as well. And God, be with Dick, help him with his procedure tomorrow. We've got many that are not with us this evening, but we just need you to reach down and touch their lives. We pray that you'll be with John England, help him. For whatever reason you're not here tonight, we miss him, dear Lord, and pray you just guide and protect him. Be with all those who can't be with us and help give them the strength and comfort they need to return to your love here once again. Help guide us through our evening and through our life. Help lead us in your way always. Pray that you'll be with all those working for your cause. Be with the missionaries here and around the world. Be with all those working spread your love in the world help us all to be able to shine your light help us to be able to make this world a little bit better place thank you dear lord for all you do and pray you'll always be with us in jesus name amen well last week wednesday night came and went and as we were leaving i sent tom a message and said I think it'd be a good idea if I had something prepared for this Wednesday night. <laughs> and Tom said, yeah, that'd probably be a good idea. So tonight I'd like to talk, and we got a little bit of time left, to talk to you about you are the light of the world. Now in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, he gave us some of his most important teachings for being a Christian. Jesus taught us how we need to treat each other with his golden rule. Treat others how you want them to treat you. He taught us how to pray. He taught us many times in his Sermon on the Mount how Christians need to live their lives going the extra mile for others. And in order to increase in our knowledge of God, as Paul said, instructs us, we need to take a closer look into all the subjects that Jesus teaches us. And so tonight I'd like to take a closer look and you are the light of the world. But before I begin, let me have a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you so much for all you do and working in our lives. Pray that you'll just be with us, uh, be with me tonight as I speak, and help me to speak the words you have for us. Help guide and protect us always. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So let's start by taking a look at the main part here, Matthew chapter 5. I'm going to read verses 14 through 16 of Matthew chapter 5. You are the light of the world, the city that's set on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it gives light into the whole house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. You know, so in order to understand these verses a little better, let's start by looking into just what light meant to the people that Jesus was talking about. You know, for us nowadays, Light is a simple tool. When it's dark, we turn the lights on. There's a little switch. Sometimes lights are automatic. They just come on whenever it gets dark. Lights are something that we've come to accept as a commonplace thing. When the well pump dies at midnight, which 60% of all well pumps do, we can grab a flashlight. We don't need to wait till it's daylight to see it. Our cities are lit, our streets are lit, and even our cell phones can be turned into lights. But for the people that Jesus was talking to, light was much more important a thing to have 
and to care for. Many of the people attending Jesus' Sermon on the Mount were shepherds or fishermen, goat herders or farmers. When a fisherman is done for the day, he relies on a light from his settlement to guide him home for the night. And for the farmer or the herdsman, the light of home would guide their steps slavely across their fields. Light was very important to them to guide them safely to where they needed to be. Let me read an example from the book of Acts. I'm going to turn over to Acts chapter 8. Read verses 26 through 35. Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 35. And the angel of the Lord spoke unto Philip and said, Arise and go to the south, the way it goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, which is in the desert. And Philip arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace the queen of Ethiopia, who had a charge of all her treasures, and he had come to worship in Jerusalem. He was returning and sitting on his chariot, raising Isaiah the prophet. And the spirit said to Philip, Go near and join myself to this chariot. Philip ran up to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah, and he said to him, Understand what you read? And he said, How can I understand it? except that some man should guide me. And he desired that Philip would come up and sit with him. The place where he was reading was this. He was led by sleep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before the shears, he opened not his mouth. And the eunuch asked Philip and said, I pray thee, of whom does he speak, of himself or some other man? And then Philip opened his mouth and began with this same scripture and preached Jesus unto him. You know, God used Philip as a guiding light to lead this man to God. And this is one of the ways that Jesus wants us to be a light to the world, by leading, to, leading others through our light to him. Another thing light meant to the farmers and fishermen of that day, it meant a um, and the majority of the crowds was community. When a farmer, herdsman, or fisherman was bringing their goods to market from days off, the light of the community would tell them how far to their destination. Is it one more day? Can I make it tonight? Maybe I need to camp out another night. I mean, we're taught many times in the Bible that God wants us to live and act as one community of Christians. From the beginning of the book in Genesis, God said that it's not good for man to be alone, and it's not. We need to live as a community. John Donne penned the phrase, no man is an island. And in a small rural community, this is very true. No man is an island, and us living as a Christians in a Christian community, we can shine our light like a city set on a hill. But our light as a Christian community shines all the more brightly with us all shining our light together and pointing all towards God. And when we act as one body, one spirit, with one faith, our light as a Christian community shines bright enough to lead people to God. A third thing light meant to Jesus' followers is safety. When they were traveling, they often had to worry about highwaymen. Let me turn over and read from the Psalms. Psalms number 91. Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in secret places of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wing He shall thou trust. 
His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks in the darkness, or nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come to thee in thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee all the way, and they shall bear thee up, lest their hands, lest they dash their hands and their foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the, love, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under thy feet. Because he has set his love upon me, there I will deliver him, and I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him in honor. With long life I will save him, and show him my salvation. Yes, God is our safety, our salvation, our refuge. And he wants us to be a light of safety to the world. Now another way to take a closer look at this is looking at the different types of light that Jesus talks about here. Jesus starts off talking about the light of the world. Then Jesus goes to focus our light down a little to the light of the town or the city set on a hill. Then Jesus finally brings that light into focus on the light of the house. And to be God's light in the world, we need to be all three of these lights. As the first light, the light of the world, Jesus is telling us about being a global light. This means we need to make it a priority to support the worldwide spread of the Word of God. Now, Jesus told us in Mark 16, 15 to go into all the world and preach the good news. Now, obviously, many of us can't really go into all the world to preach. I can't even afford to go to another country, but we are doing that commandment to go to all the world when we support the work of the missionaries like this church does. All the world, this is the way we can be that global light for God. Now next, Jesus talks about the city on the hill, and he says that the second half of Matthew 5, 14, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Here, Jesus is taking our global light and focusing it down to be a community light. And here is where we can let our light shine amongst all our Christian brothers and sisters. We're a Christian community, and other Christians in our community need that safety of God's light. When our fellow brothers and sisters tend to wander, we don't see them for a while. We shine God's light of love from our Christian community, and we can bring them back there. Now what Peter says in 1 Peter 4, 9, be hospitable to one another without grumbling. He's teaching us to shine our community light of God so again, to be that city on the hill that Jesus wants us to be, we need to light up each other's lights and each other's lives. Now the third level of light Jesus talks about in his teaching is about us being a light to our own home. In verse 15 of Matthew chapter 5, Jesus says, Nor do they light a lamp and put it in a basket. But they put it on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Jesus has taken that focus from our godly light of the community, global light, now down to the light of our own families and our own households. Jesus says that we can't be a light for him if we are hiding our light under a basket. Back to that no man is an island thought. Not only do people try to be an island globally, and within their own community, the people also try to be an island with their own household. They use many excuses. 
most common one I've heard is I'm just a private person. And it's okay to be private. As long as you're being private about the right things, God teaches us about privacy in the Bible. Jesus taught us about privacy right there in his Sermon on the Mount. Paul teaches us about privacy when he gives us an example of meeting privately with the churches in Jerusalem and the elders. There's many different examples of doing things privately. I know my father was one of the elders of the church that I grew up in. And there were many times that people had private meetings with the elders. It would be just the three of them and that one person in the building. No one else around to keep it private. My dad even had a private filing cabinet with a padlock on it. Of course, little David always had to ask him, why is that one locked, Dad? <laughs> my dad would just tell me, because that's private church business, and some things have to be kept private. But there are some things that can't be kept private, such as our godly life. Jesus ends verse 15 of Matthew 5 telling us that all who are in the house get that godly light. Of all the things Jesus tells us to be, this light in our own family is one of the things that I know I personally struggle with quite a bit. My oldest daughter is not a Christian. Far from it. We do try to talk to her quite often. Most of the time, our response we get is stop shoving your religion down our throats. Now, we want to be good Christian parents. We want to raise up our children in the ways of the Lord. But continuing to try to persuade them with words just isn't working. It's pushing them further and further away. So we're faced with that dilemma of how to shine our godly light in our own house without using our voices. Well, if you can't reach in one way, you can't just stop shining your light. You've got to keep trying. So we've decided that the next step to reaching them is, as Jesus says, let our light so shine through the way we live, through our Christian life, so that our deeds and our happiness in God, maybe that will convince them. Now in verse 16 of Matthew chapter 5, Jesus finishes talking about shining the light by saying, in the same way, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So, to conclude all this, Jesus says we need to shine our godly light with our good deeds. We can, according to Jesus, through sharing his words, shine our light, but we also have to fill our lives with good deeds for God. If everything we do glorifies God, then we can shine his light bright enough to be seen by everyone and bring them all in here. So in order to be a godly light that Jesus wants us to be, to best let our godly light shine, let's let it shine through our words and our deeds. Well, let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you so much for your goodness. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the inspiration you give us. We thank you for life, dear Lord. We pray that you'll just be with us as we head out from here. Guide us in your ways and help us to shine your light in this world. It needs you so much, Lord. We love you and pray you bring us safely back together again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a blessing.